Hi, and welcome to Edwards Motorhomes. I'm Andy, and today we're going to do a handover video for you on this Shosan 530 coach built motorhome. Hope you find it informative. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start on the outside and we're going to work our way in. So the first thing to show you is just here where we have your fuel fillet, which is just behind there. So you do need to open up the passenger door. And behind here, we have your add blue tank. The other thing in here, you'll notice just there, you have the switch to be able to turn off your passenger airbag, which again is important if you've got children in the front of the vehicle. Here we have the flue for your heating. Now there is a way to take the flues off without damaging it. Put your hand on the top, lift from the bottom and pull off. When you put them on again, make sure you get the two clips back in just there and just give it a tap at the bottom. You don't want to just pull it from there. You will end up breaking your clips at the top. In here, first thing we have is your trip switches just here, your fuses, and your battery charger. Here we have the filler for your fresh water tank. And just here we have this switch. Now with that down, it means you can obviously be able to put your water into your fresh water tank. If you flick that up, it will drain the system down. Electric hookup point just here. You do need to press the blue switch down to be able to take the hookup cable out. Then we come around the rear of the vehicle. Of course, you have your reversing camera at the top. Obviously, your tow bar and your rear parking sensors. And, of course, you have this good-sized storage area at the rear. When we come around onto the driver's side, first thing is just here, that is the release for your wastewater tank. So you just need to pour that out. It'll drain down your wastewater. And then we have your cassette. Now, with your cassette, on the toilet itself, there's a grey handle underneath. And that will control the blade for the toilet. Now, the blade must be closed for you to be able to take your cassette out. And when you do that, you literally just click from there. You pull it out. Now, on any campsite, they'll have what they call an Alson point. So you just wheel that to the Alson point. When you get there... You just take the cap off the top, press the orange button on the back and flush away. Once you've done that, just rinse it through with the hose, flush away again, put your new blue or green chemical directly into the cassette. You don't want to put it down your toilet. It's a very strong chemical. And what will happen is it will stain the toilet if you put it in through there. So again, just pop it into your cassette. That locks back into there. Job done. Here we have your fridge vents. And here is your gas locker. Let's take a look inside. So we're going to start off in your cab. Now, on the driver's door, we have your electric windows just here and your cab central locking switches just there. Mirror just headlights and fog lamps just there. Wash wipes. We have your indicators and your main beam just here. Cruise control settings, radio controls. Just here, this is the sensors for your rear rear sensors on the back of the vehicle and just here we have your mirror heaters then we have your media center so with your media center you can see you've got your DAB you've got your Apple CarPlay you've got your Android your telephone if you tap on telephone if you go to the setting switch just there scroll down you can then go into telephone setup and then again for your Bluetooth on your phone you can link it into the system if we go back the other thing that you really need on here is your main screen, which is on the far left. Press on there and it will give you all your options. So again, you've got your wireless monitoring from your telephone. You've got your radio, you've got your Spotify, iPod, telephone. Scroll across your audio and your standby. You also do have these at the bottom. So again, you can flick between. You've got your camera button there. When you are running, press that and your camera will come on for you. Underneath... You can see here where it says passenger airbag. Now we did speak before about on the passenger side, you had the switch to turn the passenger airbag off. Again, that will come up if that's the case. Here we have your hazard warning lights. And down here we have your heater controls and your cab air conditioning. You also have a double USB charger. 
just there. Reversing camera, just here. And then up above on either side, you'll see we have these switches. And these, are these sets of lights just here. Now we'll come in to your bed later on, but you will notice there's a key just here and that's to lock the bed. So again, nobody can start messing about with the bed while you're in it. The other thing to show you in the front is obviously both captain seats swivel. Now underneath the seats, you've got two bars. One to move the seat backwards and forwards. The other one, swivel the seat. And then you will need to move the backwards and forwards round to get into the right position. The only other thing really to show you in the cab is I'm gonna come up the way slightly. Just down here, we have the handbrake. Now you will notice that the handbrake is floppy when it's on. When you take it off, there will be tension. Lift, put it on, it will drop down. And the reason for that is so you can spin the seat nice and easily. And there we have your cab. So we're now moving into your lounge area. But what we're gonna do first of all is your beds. So you obviously have your electric bed above and we have your dinette bed here. So if we start with your dinette, the first thing is obviously the table's locked in position. Now there is a catch just here on your left hand side. If you lift that up, you can then spin this to wherever you want it to go and lock it into place. So again, you put it pretty much wherever you want it. When you're actually turning the table over, you need to pull this bar out and flip. That then will give you some rigidity just there. So again, if you're leaning on it, you're not going to break your table. Now, if you turn it into the bed, you need to get it into the right position first and foremost. So you want to get it between these two benches. Once you've done that, you then have these two switches just here. So we want the table switch. Press that button, the table will go down. Now, once we've got it into the right position, we need to take these two cushions off. Pop those there for a second. And then you have these cushions in the rear. So, that one will just slide in there like that. And this one into here. This one then just sits in there. You bring that forward. We move these two out the way. And there we have your double bed, which would be your lounge. Now above this, we obviously have the main double bed and that will work from this switch just here. So you press that button, the bed comes down. Underneath here, we also have the netting, which you can then attach to the mattress, which will lock on these anchor points in the roof. It's just there to stop you from rolling out of bed in the middle of the night. And there we have your beds. Okay, so continuing with the lounge, the first thing we need to look at is your passenger seats. So you'll notice here, you've got your extra two seat belts. Now they can be put around the back of this cushion to make it a little bit more comfortable. But when you are traveling with two more passengers, what you need to do is remove this cushion. Let's pop that over there. And also this board. So of course that then gives your passenger a lot more room, you've got your leg space. While we're here, if we remove this cushion, Underneath here, first thing you see is you've got your gas isolator switch just there. And then we've got your boiler. Now with your boiler, if we remove this piece just here, you'll see you've got this yellow toggle switch. If that's down, it means the boiler is sealed. If we flick that up, that will then open up the boiler. So any water that you pump through your system is just gonna pump straight down onto the floor. The whole idea with that being is again, come the winter months, if you know you're gonna have a frost, flick that switch up, drain that down. You don't want to be leaving any water in your boiler when you know there's going to be a frost. So we'll just pop that back into there. So next, 
we have your windows. Now, with your windows, you must make sure that these are closed when you're traveling. Otherwise, they'll catch the wind and they're gone. So you really need to make sure that they are locked. Now, you've got these little buttons just there. So you press those in. And you push open. And it works on a ratchet. So you need to push right back up and drop down to lock it back into place. Also, if you unclip there and lift up, we have your blinds. And of course, at the top, we have your fly screens. And they will literally just clip on like so. And then if you wanted the windows half open, half closed to keep your privacy, you can do that. When releasing, just unclip there. Those slide back up. That drops back down. So, then we come to this side. So if we remove this cushion, what you will notice is we have excellent storage underneath here and also underneath here. Underneath the table in your lounge, you will find just here the switches for your boiler. Gas at the top, electric at the bottom. So here we come to your 12 volt control panel and your heating system. Your heating is the diesel system, the Webesto, which is very simple to use because all you literally need to do is turn it. And of course, the higher you turn it up, the higher the temperature. There is a thermostat, which is just on this side here next to these two switches, which again, that one there is that light switch. This one, you see you've got your little blue lights just down here and it's for those. So if we come back up to your 12 volt control panel, your main switch there to turn the electrics on or off. That one is for your lights. That one is your water pump. That one is your awning light. This one here will show you the leisure battery. That one, your vehicle battery. Fresh water. And that one just dims the lights on your 12 volt controls. In the kitchen, the first thing, of course, is we have excellent cupboard space up here. Now, you'll also notice in this cupboard, we've got your TV booster just there for your aerial. And we also have your solar panel controller at the rear. We then have your three gas hobs. And of course, we have your sink. You must remember, obviously, if you're using any of your water systems, so that's your taps. It's also your toilet. You must have your water pump on. Underneath, we have your cutlery drawer just here. Of course, we also have a 230 volt socket there, and then we have your table, higher or lower switch, and the same with your bed. Then we have your gas oven underneath, and your electric heater. In this cupboard, just here, we have more storage, but we also have more gas isolator switches just there. Here, we have your three way fridge freezer. Now, your three-way fridge freezer does exactly that. It'll work in one of three ways. So you have gas, you have electric, and you have battery. Electric, quite self-explanatory, you must be plugged into the 230 volt mains. Gas, you must have your gas turned on. The one that tends to confuse people is battery, because you would assume that battery means that it's running off the ledger battery. It doesn't. It actually means it's working off the vehicle battery. So your engine must be turned on for that to happen. So if we look at your controls, you turn on from just here. Now, as you can see at the moment, it says it's going to work off gas. Press that button, we'll come over to automatic. Now with automatic, it will do what it thinks is correct. So again, if you've unplugged it from the mains and you turn on your engine, it should directly go straight over then onto leisure battery. But again, always monitor it and make sure it's doing what you want. So again, press the button. This one will take you through your options. It's going to flash at us a battery because the engine isn't running, so it's saying you can't do that. Bring to gas. Most people would leave it on automatic. Then, of course, this button here will give you your temperatures. And you open from there. Underneath, just here, we also have your gas isolator switch for your fridge freezer. And above, we have this handy storage compartment. 
So in your bathroom, the first thing I want to show you is this big storage area just here. So pop those open. You've got this huge storage area, but something that is very clever, I have a button just here. If you press that, slide it forward, coat hangers on there, slide it back, you're maximizing the whole of your space. It really is a very clever idea. And then you've got shelving down this side. Just here, of course, this cupboard slides away to give you storage down this side. Your sink, more storage just here. Now, you'll remember when we were outside the van, we were talking about your toilet. So as you can see, the blades are crossed, which allowed us to take the cassette out. Underneath here, you have this gray handle. If we turn that, that will then open the cassette. So again, you can use the system. The only reason you really want that open anyway is if you're using it. Apart from that, keep it closed. It means you can take your cassette out. Electric flush is just there. So again, you must have your water pump on for that to work. And if your cassette is full, a light will come on just underneath that little diagram just there. Then of course, on this side, we have your full size shower cubicle, which again, great size in there, but you must have your water pump on for that to work. And of course, we can then slide this door across for a bit of privacy. So there we have your handover video on the show Psalm 530. Really hope you found it informative. We do have a lot of other handover videos on our YouTube channel at Edwards Motorhomes. Please do look them up. Well worth a view. Thank you very much.